Which Denver Broncos undrafted rookie free agents could be roster locks and whose places could they take on the active roster, potentially heading into the 2022 NFL regular season? Plus, who would be some names of players on the roster now that would be surprise cuts in the eyes of Broncos country? You get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day in your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch us on YouTube, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more every single day, all year long, from the south stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos beat reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Benger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. Sarah, my friend, you know what? Next week is going to be a very monumental week for this Broncos football team because they're going to have to make a lot of significant roster cuts. And you and I have talked about some of the undrafted guys on this podcast ad nauseum, but it's not because they're overhyped. It's because they're living up to the hype that is being created about them. And I'm excited to break this down because I think there's a couple of uh, undrafted rookie fringe the Broncos have on the roster that I will, that I do think will make the active roster. I think so too. And I think I remember us talking kind of back near the draft about just how tough it was going to be for any undrafted players to make this Denver Broncos roster. It didn't matter if you got the highest signing bonus like Christopher Allen did, or if you got one of the lowest signing bonuses like Brandon Johnson did. And it's all about what you do with the opportunity, right? It's all about what you do when you go out there on the field. And of course, some other circumstances kind of change things, right? The Tim Patrick injury affecting a lot of things for this Denver Broncos team, but specifically the wide receiver position and how they approach building that position group, especially with KJ Hamler also coming off of injury. I think Brandon Johnson is the number one undrafted player. That's a roster lock. I, I mean, we're not even seeing him play in the second half of preseason games, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. I mean, he's an undrafted rookie who got, what, a $5,000 signing bonus or something like that, and he's not even playing in the second half of preseason games. I think the Broncos obviously love him, and he's one of those guys, Cody, where I feel just all these different con connections, all these different little tea leaves, all these things we've been reading about him, him going out to Russell Wilson's San Diego compound, all these different types of things. He's now a, a lock for the Denver Broncos 53-man roster, in my opinion. I think you agree with me on that one. And I do. And, you know, I feel like the narrative would be a little different if Tim Patrick never got injured, right? Because the Broncos wouldn't necessarily have to keep a wide surplus of guys. And more than likely, if Tim Patrick was still around and wasn't, you know, banged up, didn't tear his ACL, maybe you could stash these guys on the practice squad, right? Because maybe they're not getting as deep of a look as maybe they are right now. And these guys are getting looks with the Broncos offense, with Russell Wilson, with Brett Rippon, with Josh Johnson. They're getting heavily involved. I'm a big believer in the Brandon Johnson hype train. I think that he's earned that. And as Coach Outen said, he's a young, hungry wide receiver outside <laughs> of that, you know. But outside of that, there is another young, hungry wide receiver that is on this Broncos roster that, I, you know, has – in my opinion, made some big splashes, especially in the last couple of weeks. And that's Jalen Virgil, another undrafted rookie wide receiver uh, at Appalachian State. And for Jalen Virgil, like this is a guy, he, he just, he's so attention to detail when he's coming out there because he knows like, you know, the odds are against him, at least coming into training camp. The odds were against him to make this roster considering how deep Denver has been a wide receiver. But Jalen Virgil has taken on the task, has taken on the challenge and has made plays with his speed downfield. I mean, earlier in training camp, he had this amazing one handed catch in the middle of the field and ran it all the way in for a touchdown. And then we saw in the preseason week one, three catches, 83 yards, the deep ball element, the, the ability to track that football and to focus. Oh, and then in week two, you know, we saw the same body control, like being able to contort his body to adjust to catch a really tough pass or a crazy pass, by the way, there, but he was able to haul it in just that type of attention to detail for a young guy 
is impressive enough that even if the Broncos were to release him at any point, he would land on another NFL team. I'm not worried about that with Virgil. I just don't think that. I want the Broncos to release a guy like Virgil because I think he can help the team in some way this season. Then we also see the kick return game. Like, he's got the speed. He's got the ability to do just that where he has experience at. And I think he'd be the backup kick returner to, obviously, Montreal, Washington. These two guys, Brandon Johnson, Jalen Virgil, I, you and I have been on the record. I believe they're going to make the 53-man roster. I believe they're going to be the sixth and the seventh wide receiver that Denver keeps on the active 53 going into next week. And if they don't, it'll be very surprising to say the least. But a lot of people would say, what about Tyree Cleveland? What about Seth Williams? Sarah, in my opinion, look, Seth Williams has that six foot three size that we've been talking about. But outside of just catching a touchdown pass, you know, in the preseason game, the first one against the Cowboys, like Seth Williams hasn't really done much. Like he hasn't done much in training camp that's popped out that said, hey, this guy is going to be on the active roster versus like guys like Brandon Johnson and Jalen Virgil. These guys have been making more plays consistently. That's what it's all about. Tyree Cleveland, you know, as much as Dwayne Stuke said, you know, we like Tyree. We believe he could be a core special teams guy, but he's got to be healthy. And also kind of going to the fact that Nathaniel Hackett, even like when Tyree got injured, kind of mentioned that he got injured because he didn't know what he was doing. And mm. I don't think it's fair to these guys that have been putting their work in in training camp. And I think if Tyree was healthy, he'd be putting in the work in. I'm not trying to say that Tyree's not working hard, but it's like Tyree, unfortunately, got injured and can't do anything. So it's it's not fair to Brandon Johnson. It's not fair to Jalen Virgil that if he were to get awarded at a roster spot when technically he wasn't able to do anything during training camp. I think that is something that we'll see. And I think you have a better chance of passing Seth Williams and Tyree Cleveland off through waivers at this point to bring him back on the practice squad. I think you do too. And I think if you had said before training camp, an undrafted guy is going to make the roster. I think I would have predicted Jalen Virgil just based on his size, speed, his athletic profile. He's one of those guys that uh, he, all he needed to do really was go out there and kind of prove all the things we'd read about him, all the things we'd heard about him. And he's done that. And you're exactly right in regards to guys like Tyree Cleveland. Unfortunately, injuries happen. And unfortunately, it can cost you your spot on the team, right? It's it's just the unfortunate reality of how things are. And I agree with you. And we talked about this regarding the quarterbacks as well. But I don't think the Broncos would have much of an issue getting those two guys through the waiver system. And maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe some other teams looked at those those two guys coming out of their draft or, or, you know, over the last couple of years and they just really like them. But I think, I feel like you're right about that, Cody. I feel like if you wanted to get Tyree Cleveland and or Seth Williams on the practice squad, you'd be able to do it. I don't think you'd be able to do the same with Jalen Virgil, certainly not Brandon Johnson. And and that's where I, I think the Broncos have to keep those, those two guys. I think they have to keep seven receivers and I don't think that's too much. Those guys can play special no. teams. They can contribute in a variety of ways. So, I think that's not only the right thing to do, I think it's the smart thing to do. And we'll see what George Payton and the personnel department thinks about the position. Maybe they're on the same boat as us. George, if you're listening, I'm telling you, it's seven receivers. Seems like the ideal thing to do here gives you some leverage in case anybody does go down with an injury. You do have a, a lot of great insurance policies that can step up that have built that relationship with Russell Wilson. So we'll see how that goes. But Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. We're going to talk about some names that would surprise us or would it surprise us if they were part of roster cuts next week and when the Broncos have to trim from 80 to 53. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Brightco. And folks, there was a video that Brightco had sent me. It was of this guy that was at the New York Yankees game that was going to propose to his fiance. And before he goes to do that, he loses the ring. He drops the ring. Well, here's the lesson. You don't want to be that guy, and you certainly don't want it splattered all over the internet. The guys at Brightco Jewelry Insurance will make sure that you can get a replacement for the full value of that ring. And no matter if it's lost, stolen, or you just can't figure out what happened to it, go to bright.co forward slash locked on. It's the fastest, easiest, and cheapest way to cover your ass with the best jewelry insurance in the business. And these guys at Brightco are geniuses. They made buying insurance for your engagement ring, your watch, or whatever so friggin' easy that you can get covered in two minutes on your cell phone. You won't find a better deal on great coverage that's super affordable. Bright.co forward slash locked on. We all hate insurance, right? So these guys at Brightco turn the whole experience around. So it's probably the easiest thing you can do for yourself this week. No excuses, man. For five bucks a month, you get totally comprehensive coverage and it won't take you more than two minutes on your cell phone. Check it out. Bright.co forward slash locked on. And you have to see the videos that they sent us. Brightco has a bunch of these hilarious videos all together, including a Kim Kardashian crying that she lost her diamond earring in the ocean because Chris Humphreys threw her in the water and people are dying as according to what her sister had said. You can see it for yourself at bright.co forward slash locked on.
When the Denver Broncos make roster cuts next week, there will always be some surprise names that get thrown out onto the list. And ideally, I think some of the names we talked about, the Brandon Johnsons, Jalen Virgils, I think you and I would be very surprised at this, Sarah, if that were the case. But there's some other names out there that we're going to focus on here. Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platform. Or whether you watch us on YouTube, we appreciate you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into us talking all things Denver Broncos. Make sure you engage in the YouTube comment section down below. You can tweet us on Twitter anytime that you want. We appreciate you so much. So potential surprise cuts here, Sarah. I know this is uh, you know an interesting thing to kind of float out ahead of the final preseason game, but more so there are some players that I feel like would be a little bit of a surprise and maybe some that wouldn't be a surprise if they were on that initial release list going into next week to trim the roster. Yeah, and, and here's one name, Cody, that I think would be a big surprise to a lot of people, and it's Jonathan Cooper. And I don't want Jonathan Cooper. Let's let's just make this clear, right? We, we have to speculate on this stuff because it's what we do for our job, right? We speculate on who could stay, who could go, and things like that. But, man, these guys are all people – it stinks that this stuff is going to happen to them in the next week yeah. or potentially going to happen to them. So we feel for them, but absolutely. I, I think that it's one of those things where we're not rooting for any certain particular guys to be no. off the roster or anything like that. We're just talking about it. So just so that's clear to everyone listening that that's in the comments and things like that, you don't need to be rooting for people to get cut. But I certainly think that talking about the possibilities is important to how this roster is built. Jonathan Cooper is part of a loaded edge position group isn't he Cody I mean just a ton of guys out there and it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for the Broncos I think they have seven guys right now at that position that I feel are pretty well NFL caliber edge guys and and that includes Jonathan Cooper and right now I would say based on what we talked about with Tyree Cleveland can you justify keeping somebody like Jonathan Cooper over somebody like Aaron Patrick and the situations are very different because Jonathan Cooper showed quite a bit last year when he was healthy out there on the field I mean he was dominant at times in that Dallas Cowboys game and a couple of other games he really showed some stuff so to me I would be very surprised if Jonathan Cooper was cut even though He's been out with that finger injury, the surgery that he had. He's been missing some time. He looked very explosive in the game that he was back in against the Buffalo Bills. Even though he didn't have any sacks or anything like that, he was still flying around the field, still out there with the top special teams group. But Jonathan Cooper, to me, Cody, he's one of those guys that's kind of like, could you could go either way. You could realistically see a scenario where the Broncos do let him go, but then you could also see them saying, you no, know, based on what he did last year, we're keeping him around. And that's a tough dilemma, right? Because we always we always hear that the NFL is a what have you done for me lately type of business. And when you factor in Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, Baron Browning, Nick Benito, there's four guys there. And then there's Malik Reed, who's always been a, a valuable guy. And right now, I think the question is for George Payton, what is in the best interest right now of the Broncos? You know, is it Jonathan Cooper? Is it Malik Reed at this point in time? You know, Malik is the guy that has been so reliable when called upon. Jonathan Cooper flashed that high motor last year. And all of a sudden, like all of us in Broncos country, are like, hey, we really like what we're seeing here from Jonathan Cooper. Could the Broncos maybe get away with him clearing waivers? I think that's the risk, right? I mean, kind of similar to the risk they took with Justin Hollins just a few years ago. I'd say probably with Jonathan Cooper, you let him hit the waivers, probably a bigger risk than that in comparison because of what we've seen from him. And obviously the Dallas Cowboys remember him very, very well. And there's going to be teams out there that do need some help, an outside linebacker, and also need some help potentially a defensive end. That's an, uh, a name to keep an eye on. But also, Seth Williams is also another guy. I know we talked about him a little bit at the top of the show here today. Uh, he's one of those guys that I feel like if Brandon Johnson and Jalen Virgil are going to make this roster, Seth Williams is not. I don't see a scenario where anybody else does because, right, we talk about Cortland. We talk about KJ. We talk about Jerry. Kendall Hinton, I believe, is a firm roster lock. Montreal Washington is a roster lock. So if they carry seven, there's two spots really up for grabs, and we believe Brandon Johnson is one of those guys, and we believe that Jalen Virgil is one of those guys. So to me, Sarah, I, I think that the writing's kind of on the wall. Like Seth Williams really needs to go out there and do a little bit more. Like Granted, he, he had a couple of catches in the first game. He had that one-yard touchdown catch as well. You love to see that you may be able to get away with stashing him away on the practice squad. That's how I kind of firmly feel about Seth at this point, which isn't an indictment on him. I just think that it's just such a deep, loaded receiver room, and other guys have been making more plays throughout practice, throughout games more consistently, and I think that's something that needs to be touched on a little bit here. But there is a guy that I think I would be very, very surprised if the Broncos did cut, and that would be 
Eric Sauber. You know, a guy who's been getting in the mix at the tight end positions, had a great training camp, you know, got off to a little bit of a hot start, and then we didn't really see as much. And it wasn't by design. It wasn't like anything he was doing. It's just that the offense was going more so to the receivers. And then he catches the touchdown last week uh, in, in action against the Buffalo Bills. So Eric Sauber would be a name that if he were cut, it would surprise me. How do you feel about that? I feel the same way, Cody. I'd be very surprised by it, especially because I think we've seen kind of the Broncos intentionally highlighting Andrew Beck as a fullback in the preseason. You can't help but wonder if that was a, a sort of a way to get that on tape to say, OK, we need to make a decision one way or another. Is Andrew Beck on this roster or is he not? Because you have Albert O. You have Greg Dulcich. You have Eric Tomlinson, who got a million dollars guaranteed to be your blocking specialist. And that does not mean that he's a lock for the roster, but it is quite a bit of it's quite a bit of money. Typically, a guy gets a hundred or a million dollar bonus or a million dollar guarantee. You plan on keeping them around in some capacity, but it does not guarantee Eric Tomlinson's spot. But so you have those guys and then you have Beck and then you have Eric Saubert. So you have all these different guys. And then Saubert debuted on that uh, unofficial depth chart as the fifth tight end after we had seen, and you know, a lot of things talking about him being the number one tight end at training camp, catching touchdowns from Russell Wilson, all these different things. So to me, I would be very surprised if the Broncos decided, OK, well, you know, even with Greg Dulcich having, you know, most of the most of training camp. Right. I mean, he was, he was out there for like one day with the team. Uh, in full pads and things like that. If Greg Dulcich, you know, with his health issues and Alberto, we're playing him deep into the fourth quarter of preseason games. And Eric Tomlinson, is he is he going to contribute much as a receiver? Is he going to be more of our like extension of the offensive line? Andrew Beck, do we believe in him as a full time fullback? And is he that good at it that we want to keep him in that capacity? I don't know. I feel like Eric Salbert has shown more than those guys to me. So that would make it very surprising if the Broncos were to say, look, we're prioritizing these other guys at this position and, and we're going to let Salbert go. That would be very shocking to me at this point. But at the same time, that's why, I mean, I could see it happening. That's why I think I would be not overly surprised by it, but at the same time, definitely one of those things that would be kind of almost frustrating to a degree, right? Because you want to see the guys yeah. that have performed the best make the team. Well, and Sobert's a guy that I think another team would pick up with the quickness off of waivers. So that, that'll be something to, to keep an eye on there. I know that there's another guy, too, on our list here, McTelvin Aguim. And it, it, this is a big week for him. He's going to have to step up and perform. But I, I honestly would not be surprised if Aguim was listed on the cut list next week. And, it's you know, we haven't just seen much from him. And it goes back like this is not a – this is not a George Payton pick. Like there's no allegiance and, and Payton is going to favor the guys. So Devers kind of dealing with some of these back ended drafts that John Elway had in place. And unfortunately some of these guys haven't necessarily panned out. So McTelvin again, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if I saw his name pop up on the list, but Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. Sarah and I are going to discuss which rookies that the Broncos drafted could make the team this upcoming season. Before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode of the show. And BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. So head to betonline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action that's happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. Which Broncos rookie draft picks could make the team here in 2022 ahead of roster cuts beginning next week? Ahead of the preseason finale against the Minnesota Vikings, these players will have to perform really, really well in the eyes of some people in Broncos country in order to make the team. Thank you once again, Broncos country. Make it Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Sarah, let's start things off here at the safety position. Uh, the Broncos, they drafted DeLarian Turner Yale out of Oklahoma a little bit later on in the NFL draft, right? The fifth round. We've already seen Jamar Johnson, a draft pick last year, already get released and waived by this Broncos football team. Delaria Turner Yell, though, has been a guy that I think has kind of had a little bit of a sluggish start. I don't I don't know if I want to say sluggish. I'd say a slow start, really acclimating to the NFL, acclimating to the playbook. And there have just been some other guys ahead of him that have been making plays. And we're talking about you have Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, you have Caden Stearns, PJ Locke. Those guys are four roster locks right there. And then you've had J.R. Reed, who's been making plays all throughout preseason and training camp. So uh, it's going to be very big for Delarian Turner. Yeah, I think they have a very impactful performance this week against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, but he might also be a guy that might get released and brought back onto the practice squad. 
that's kind of how I view it as well. And I think it's, it's just a little surprising given the fact that, you know, Hey, it's a fifth round pick. It's a guy that you recently invested a fifth round pick into to see those guys hit waivers and subject them to other teams. Picking them up is a little scary, but it's not, I mean, really, I, I remember the, the Titans cut one of their high fourth round picks a couple years ago, a wide receiver, his name escapes me at this time, but it's not overly uncommon. I think for the Broncos, it kind of has been because you expect every single one of your draft picks to make the roster when the roster is not overly good. But as the roster continues to get better and better, fifth round picks, I mean, they're no longer a lock to make it. So Delarian Turner Yellow, I think I, I agree with you, Cody. He has been passed by J.R. Reed, in my opinion, just in what we've seen. And, and J.R. Reed going out there playing a little bit of that dime linebacker position against the Buffalo Bills, kind of working in with that top you know, the top defense that was out there, quote unquote, I think he's kind of the guy that it's if they keep five safeties, which I believe they will. J.R. Reed is that guy. And so that's where I think the question comes into play for these some of these draft picks, just like Matt Henningsen, a sixth round defensive lineman out of Wisconsin. And he showed some nice things in that first preseason game, really high energy, high effort type of player. But did anybody on that defensive line show anything against Buffalo to really make you want to keep anybody that's a reserve at this point, which is other than Mike Purcell, who didn't play in that game? I really I'm really skeptical that the Broncos are going to keep hardly any of these defensive linemen that they have. They might just clean house there. But Matt Henningsen, do you think he's a, a lock for the roster? I would say at, at this point, definitely not. Uh, I, yeah, this is a tough one. You know, with Henningsen. I like to compare it maybe a little bit with McTelvin Aguim, right? Like if you had to choose between Matt Henningsen and McTelvin Aguim, which path are you going? Who would be seeing a little bit more from? And I would say we've seen a little bit more from Henningsen. I mean, we've seen the pressure. We've seen the disruption he can cause. And I think he can continue to grow into that role. Whereas, McGee, you know, Aguim has had opportunity after opportunity. Unfortunately, it's like Vic Fangio's staff, you know, he was having a good preseason training camp last year. Vic and the coaching staff didn't do anything with Aguim. And this year, it's just kind of like we haven't seen as much. And I don't know, with guys like Jonathan Harris, Kongbo, I mean, Deshaun Williams, it's it's hard to maybe justify a game's place, but I feel like it'd be hard to kind of part ways with Matt Henningsen at this point. But now let's go to the secondary, right? Cornerback, a position that, you know, we've said, hey, you know, hey, this is going to be an interesting one for this Denver Broncos football team. Obviously, Michael Lejamudia out four to six weeks with a separated elbow. You have Pat Sertan, Ronald Darby right now. Damari Mathis really is that number three guy. And I, and then you have Bless Austin, Fayon Hicks. Fayon Hicks is a name that's been interesting. I, I feel like Hicks and Mathis have been some young corners that have been impressive throughout training camp, you know, early on in the preseason. Probably want to see some more plays being made in the preseason by Hicks. I'm not worried about Mathis one bit, but do you feel like Hicks is a lock to make this roster? I would say I don't think so, honestly. I think the Broncos need to go out, maybe find some additional help at the position. Like we talked about in a previous episode, kind of outlining some of the veteran options that are out there. Maybe the Broncos will scour the waiver wire once you know these cuts start coming in next week. But I think right now, Hicks seems more to me like a guy, maybe what a lot of people initially anticipated from him. He's a seventh round draft pick. Maybe the practice squad is really the ideal place for him to go and develop we know those practice squad guys, so they'll typically get opportunities at some point during the year to come up either onto the active roster or come into, you know, a game day situation and play some special teams. I feel like that's kind of his ideal spot right now. So to me, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, hey, among the top 53 players of this roster right now, you have Fayon Hicks, one of your one of your draft picks this year. I think that it's OK for the Broncos to put him or try to put him on the practice squad and sneak him on there. But another day three draft pick, Cody, that I do think is a guarantee for this roster. We've seen some really good stuff from him, some versatility, even Luke Wattenberg, the center out of Washington. I, I wonder if you agree with me on this one. I feel like he's a lock for this roster. I feel like maybe, man, is he one of the top backup interior offensive linemen that the Broncos have right now? He's done a really good job, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think he is. And I think the biggest thing for him is can he stay healthy? You know, he dealt with, I think he got rolled up on the ankle in that first game against the Dallas Cowboys. But he's the backup to Lloyd Cushenberry. And I think he's a roster lock simply because cushionberry has been battling that knee injury throughout training camp so far. And hopefully it's not something that lingers. He was back at practice earlier this week, so that's a good sign. But you never know. You need a guy that can snap the ball. And I think Wattenberg, with his experience at Washington, I think would be very valuable for the Broncos to keep 
on this active roster. But Broncos country, let us know what you think down below in the YouTube comment section. Tweet us on social media as well. We appreciate you so much for tuning in. Make it Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. As Sarah and I break down all things orange and blue for everybody in Broncos country, we have you covered every single day all year long. Sarah, my friend, it was great to chat with you on today's episode of the show alongside Broncos country. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to take a look at players to watch against the Minnesota Vikings and players with the most to prove. You get that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.